Yes, guys, how are we doing? All loud and clear. So we're going to get fired straight in, guys, and crack on with today's training, which is as much about understanding what not to do rather than as always being focused on what we need to do when most of us, if we're honest, we're already pretty overwhelmed and, and pretty stressed out and always time poor is the kind of phrase I use. So following on from the video that you guys all said was kind of really helpful when I posted that, honestly, I am F-U-C-K-E-D right now. That is my honest attempt at not swearing. Um, I'm sure you guys are all kind of aware that I really struggled towards uh, the entire last quarter of last year, to be honest with you. I've just started writing um, an email out to Paul because there's a lot of stuff I haven't been dealing with. Um, when he says to me, are you OK? I just say, yeah, brother, I'm fine. I'm smashing it. Everything's kind of good. And the fact is that September, October, November and December were actually a complete disaster for me, okay? To, to the level where I got to like, I don't even know what the point is anymore. I, I don't really, there were, there were days when I was like, you know, everything was just too much. Um, and in complete honesty, if it wasn't for Logan, I was just like, what's the point? I feel like giving up, okay? Started using all those languages again, okay? I can't cope. Nothing ever seems to go my way. Straight back into playing the victim, blaming everyone else, blaming the world. Um, and it's not good. It's not a good place to be. There were days when I felt like everyone was against me. I became reactive. I even started replying to Bellends on Facebook who I didn't even know who they were, okay, who had said things on my post. So I've kind of had to dig really deep in reflection. Um, and this training is the outcome. So you guys know I always like to be brutally honest. So I hope it'll hope it'll help really. So when I've kind of gone back into it, so I'm saying things like, you know, I physically couldn't do any more. But yeah, every time we're struggling, we always look at what we need to do, right? What do I need to do more of? Where do I need to work harder? Where do I need to put more effort in? Where am I not upscaling? Where am I not doing the things I need to do? And it kind of got to the level where um, obviously I've got to know Laura's parents and stuff and they didn't know anything about like music production, about events, about DJing, about kind of all the other stuff. And, and several other people said this as well. Um, and her dad literally said to Laura like, I had no idea about all that other stuff. Like, how does he do all that? I don't, I don't, I don't even get it. I don't even, I have no idea how he does it all. Okay. Which is a big clue. So to me, the problem was not what do I need to do extra? It's become very much what do I need not to do? Okay. Because creating another big freaking list of stuff that I need to do isn't going to help me at the moment okay now in hindsight i actually wished we had done this training before the last one now because i think it would have been a different outcome so if you guys do want to go back and do your goal setting again after this then it might make sense because it actually made sense to me and i'm going to do that so this time of year it is completely overwhelming because it's the fresh start. It's new goals. It's 2022. I'm going to smash it. I'm going to write all this stuff down. I'm going to do exactly what we did in that previous training. Right. And I think now more so than ever, one people's energy is a bit low. We're all a bit still knackered and coming out of that kind of slumber uh, from Christmas and we also take too much on at this time of year because we're setting new goals. We feel obliged. We need to come back. New year, new me. Every piece of marketing says that. And I think we also need to now look at in any form of critical review process. And I've had to deeply critically review myself, whether it's um, whether it's daily, whether it's monthly, whether it's weekly, whether it's quarterly, any of those things, the 
key question that Paul teaches me to ask myself and that I've had to go right back to is always knowing what I know now, I will, and then we start to develop from there, okay? Because I can't just say the last three months have been a write-off, but hey-ho, I'm a big tough guy. I'll crack on and make things better, okay? So that's now developed into knowing what I know now what do I need to stop doing? I can't do anymore, okay? I physically can't do. It's easy to write another to-do list, isn't it? It's easy to write another plan. It's easy to go back into your why. It's easy to set new goals. It's easy to say, I'm doing it for my family. It's easy to say, I'm doing it for myself. I'm doing more, I'm doing more, I'm doing more, okay? I'm already knackered. I'm already overwhelmed. I'm already avoiding things, okay? So, so what did I learn from it, okay? Well, one, I will honestly read all the things out to you, but there's 22 things on the list, okay? 22 things that I need not to do to have a better quarter, okay? So knowing what I know now, what did I learn? Well, I'm not going to be putting any more events on. That's going to come as a shock to a lot of people. It's come as a shock to my business partner. Okay. It's come as a shock to the DJs, but I need to stop taking financial risks. I don't need to take financial risks. And every single one of them is a huge risk. Okay. Huge burden. I won't be drinking anymore because every single time I drink, I make bad decisions. I'm about as much use as a chocolate teapot until Tuesday afternoon, okay? My mind starts to spiral out of control. So I've said to you guys before, it's like pouring petrol on a fire. If there's anything that's simmering away that's making me unhappy, it's like giving that thing some speed, okay? It will go mental. So, um, and the final one is, I'm not going to be going to any DJ gigs without my driver staying over. So I won't have the opportunity to stay in hotels. I won't have the opportunity to be led astray because we all get led astray, okay? So those are four for me. You guys need to create your own ones. So if you're watching on playback, you might want to do it while I'm talking or you might want to pause it and do them now. That's just the four, okay? But you've got to be honest, okay? I've got to be honest. We've got to stop kidding ourselves. The same behavior will not produce a different outcome, okay? I'm not going to get smashed at a gig and just by chance, because I tried it one last time, actually I woke up on Sunday morning and my energy was on fire and I had the best week ever at work. It doesn't happen. I've tested it 3,564 times. My energy will be horrific the week after. And I actually calculated probably in totality um, through what I would call moderate, drinking sessions by my standards uh, I still probably lost in the region of eight to 12 total weeks last year by lost I mean I wasn't at my best okay if I want to play in the premier fucking league I need to be at my best 52 weeks a year okay not 35 so knowing what I know now what have I learned what can I do better what do I need not to do okay and this is what I've learned from Paul and it also came from one of his mentors, a guy called Dan Sullivan. Um, if you haven't looked him up, look him up. He's absolutely world class. Um, his mentorship program's like 100K. <laughs> That's like the level that he's at. Um, but he talks about non growth habits. Okay. So, what are my non growth habits currently? Because Here's the truth, guys. And again, write this down if you're watching back. We are 100% committed to our current set of habits, okay? And what we are currently doing is what we are committed to. Because if we weren't committed to it, then we wouldn't be doing it. So you have to be honest about that. We have to be honest about that in whatever level, okay? If you're getting arsehole every weekend and then making excuses, whether you want to believe this or not, you are currently committed 
to get an arse sold every weekend. Okay, that's your commitment to yourself. That's a tough pill to swallow. Okay, but that's the truth because we will only do what we are committed to. And I've spoken to you about Brian Keane saying this all the time. Show me your habits and I'll show you your results. Show me your habits for the next 12 weeks and I'll show you your results for the next 12 weeks. Show me your habits for the rest of this week and I'll show you the results for this week. Because all the success and failure that we work on is based on our habits. Okay, It's even built into the word, isn't it? What we habitually do. If I have and make an excuse for not getting up because I stayed up too late again, watching Netflix, then I will habitually become that person. Likewise, if I set a reminder to get to bed at 9.30, after creating a solid bedtime routine and getting up early and going for a walk and doing some personal development, I will habitually become a person that do that, okay? So, I'm going to share these here, um, but like I said, in future, um, I would probably now do this before setting the goals. So before setting the world-class 2025, 2023, 90-day, 40-day, one-week, one-day missions, let's look at what we need to get rid of first, okay? Because no matter how big my goal is, and this really, really, really struck home with me. No matter how big my goal is, if I don't stop my non-growth habits, they are going to get in the way of it. Okay? If I don't stop drinking at gigs, they are massively going to get in the way of my business outcomes. If I keep risking upwards of 15 to 20 grand on putting events on that very often don't go to plan, then that habit is going to put the earning and incomes of my other business at risk. Okay. So the habits are going to go in the get in the way. So as I said, I estimated that I lost eight to 12 weeks last year. And we then need to look at what are our daily things that are our non-growth habits? So this is quite, these are some examples, okay? Um, and they're quite deep. So this might be the point you want to listen to mine, make some notes, pause, um, and maybe make your list as well. Um, but again, you need to be honest about these. I would say, essentially, most people might resonate with both of these, okay? But my list is drinking, Gambling. By gambling, I don't mean placing bets. I mean taking large financial gambles in business, which I've been doing every single month. Staying up too late. Eating shit. Procrastinating. Blaming and complaining others. Not planning my day. Not completing my planner. Again, guys, I'm just like you. Like I had to tell Paul this week, I did my planner two days out of seven last week. Why? I don't know. Don't know, just didn't, okay? Not asking for help. That's my worst one, okay? Um, he's been asking me if I need some help since September. Not once have I said yes, okay? Lying, because that's a lie in itself, isn't it? You need some help and someone asks you for some help and you say, no, no, I'm fine, mate, smashing it. You're not, if you're not, unless you truly are, unless you truly have every single piece of life in alignment, unless you're like Aunt Middleton, then I would say there's probably something that you will need help with. So essentially, if someone asks you and you say no, then that's a non-growth habit, isn't it? Um, looking for the easy option, snoozing, multitasking, chasing people who can't even be asked to reply. You guys know I'm massive on, and I've said this on all the sales um videos that i've done when people sign up that the difference between me and other coaches is you have a check-in process and if you don't do it then i'll chase you up to make sure you do it but i've set a new rule 
And that's if someone ignores me for three or more messages, then they won't be getting a fourth. Okay. Because I think that's actually fairly fair. Otherwise, my role becomes I can't work on coaching videos for you guys like this because I'm constantly chasing people to fill their forms in. You know, that's an, ad, that's an admin role. So again, it's a fair boundary that. Do you guys, do you guys agree? Does that make sense? If you've asked someone something three times and every time they just chose to ignore it or made a decision to ignore it, then that's the same, isn't it? Again, Paul's just taught me that. Um, watching football, that's not one for me though. I hate football. Um, not being present when I'm with Logan, saying I'm going to turn my phone off at six o'clock and then not turning my phone off at six o'clock. Doing shit gigs for terrible money. And answering messages constantly. Okay. And the biggest one, because I then broke it down into three. Okay. There's three massive non-growth habits that I need to stop. Number one is checking my phone all the time. Two I reckon I lose two to three excuse my language, fucking hours every day, checking my phone. Oh, someone's messaged me. Oh, it's only an easy one. Oh, I'll just reply to that. Oh, now I'm into a chat. Oh, now Sarah's messaged. Oh, well, I'll just do that. I'm just going to box these off now because I don't want them to build up across the day. All of a sudden, it's like one o'clock in the afternoon. Massive non-growth habit, okay? I have to get shrewd on specific times that are set down. That's the only time I go into messages and reply to them. Doesn't mean I'm not going to reply to them promptly and on time. Just means I'm not going to do them all day. Because let's face it, if you just sat in your emails or your, your phone, you could just literally reply to stuff all day, especially with Facebook, okay? Um, so my number one is checking my phone all the time. Number two is asking for help. Um, I don't think anything gives me more anxiety than asking for help. Uh, and I need to start to get a handle on that. Don't really know why it is. And number two is taking things, three is taking things personally. Okay. You have to not take things personally if you want to be okay. Because other people, when we expect us of other people, um, we'll always feel, and the fact that's what Paul's email said yesterday, if you want to feel constantly disappointed, let down and pissed off all of the time, keep expecting you from other people because you won't ever get you from other people. So you'll only ever be let down. Okay. So those were my top three, taking things personally, checking my phone all the time and asking for help. So as I would say, pause your phone at this stage. Okay. Not if you're watching live, because it'd be really boring talking to myself, but if you're watching it on playback or you want to go on this afterwards, Let's get that created, okay? Let's create that long list. What are my non-growth habits? What do I need to stop doing? And let's get them handled before we start putting stuff in an already overwhelmed schedule, okay? Make sense? Good. So how do we know? That's the next question, okay? How do I know what is a daily non-growth habit, okay? How did I find all of those? Well, that's actually quite easier and it's easier than you think. And you know, when you have one of those aha kind of moments and you'll notice I said at the start that I hadn't really been filling in my planner as well as, 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 way, as, well as I should have been whilst preaching about it all the time, which is kind of hypocritical in itself isn't it selling accountability but then I'm not accountable to Paul and I avoid him every time he asks me if I want some help but we have to laugh and be honest about these things because it's not a big thing I'm, I'm not not murdered anyone have I I've just not filled in my form for a few days okay so if you want to find out what your daily non-growth habits are then we need to look at how we're spending our time and that's why the plan is so important because if we don't know how we're spending our time on a daily basis, then how do we know? How can we review it? How can we move forward? OK, so the best day, the best way to create these is to plan and review each and every day. And now just remember it now. What are my habits? What are the habits that I'm forming that are non-growth? OK. 
is completing a planner that has a section on it about steps, training, alcohol, personal development, stretching, journaling, gratitude, appreciation messages, and the big one, I'm not even going to tell you what the number was, but screen time, going to give you a really good insight into what the non-growth habits are, because mine was plus 10 hours on some days, okay? I know it's a little bit different because I do a lot of work off of my phone. But that's a serious non-growth habit. You can, how on earth can you be living a focused, driven existence if you are on your phone for 10 plus hours every day? OK, so that's what we need to do. OK, um, another little tip for this. Um, after we've written down those non-growth habits, after we've started doing the planner, after we've analysed them and understood is I'm also building into that now. What am I doing that's holding me back? OK, so again, this will build into doing the planner, but make a list, make a strategic list of everything you do in a week. OK. Me and Stacey Pears agreed to do this for our business yesterday. OK, so we'll make a list of every single thing we do in a week, everything. OK, and then start to rank them all, but rank them on two levels. OK, so one is going to be the skill that's involved to do it. So, again, this doesn't just have to be for business people. This is for your life as well. But we have. In the words of Molly May, we all have the same 24 hours in the day. Um, I actually think that's disgusting the way she's been treated as well for just what was a, a fairly normal comment that wasn't meant the way it was said. But essentially, we only have, let's rephrase it, we only have 24 hours in a day. OK, maybe not. We all have the same. That's why it was twisted for her. But everyone has 24 hours in a day. So we can only do so much. And if there's too much to fit in then we will just be completely overwhelmed and we'll constantly feel like we're not good enough. So let's rank them. So in, in, even in, yeah, in any area, personal life, business life, any of them. So you could also rank it in two columns. So I need to have a Lee only list and a kind of potentially delegate list. Now I then need to decide what goes on those two lists because I can't do everything. Okay. So if you rank them all, and this is the one that people forget. And this is how I think we can all possibly slightly move towards a happier, a kind of happier existence. So let's rank them on importance. Let's rank them on value. Let's rank them on skill. But also, let's start to rank everything in the week on how much we actually enjoy it. Because if we want a life that we truly love, then we're going to have to start removing some of the stuff that we truly hate. So are there things we're doing every week that we hate that could potentially be delegated? That you, you guys remember the training I did last year? We create a list and anything that's not working for me, I either find an, I need to find a way to delegate it or delete it. OK, promoting nightclub events is not working for me. So it's fucking deleted. Excuse my language. End of. Can't keep doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. Maybe if I just do the 10th one, it'll actually make money. No, Lee, you've tested it for the last nine events. It's not a viable business model. Stop doing it. OK, it's a non-growth habit. OK, again, if we don't know how we spend our time, though, then we'll kind of just be guessing, right? So it all comes down to this, actually get into work and let's do that this week, okay? 
let's first of all write down all of the non-growth habits okay the what not to do list again i'll recap you ever so slightly Drinking, taking drugs, gambling, staying up late, eating shit, procrastinating, blaming and complaining, not planning, not doing my planner, always saying yes, not asking for help, lying, looking for the easy option, snoozing, chasing people who can't be asked to reply, multitasking, checking my phone all the time, not being present, taking things personally, answering messages instantly and doing shit gigs is an example of mine and what a lot of other people are doing that could potentially be removed, okay? Though all of those are non-growth habits. So let's get them listed and look at what we need to remove and then go back to the goal list, back to the 2025 list, back to the dreams, back to the seven day goals. Because once those non-growth habits have been removed, just like the big list, everything's going to start looking a lot smaller. Everything's going to start looking easier. Your energy is going to be better. Just removing one thing you keep doing every week, which you don't like, essentially could move your needle forward. Okay, guys, that's all I've got this morning. As I said, these trainings now are going to try and keep them to a roundabout 35 minutes with specific action points to do. So remember, again, we live in an information rich society. So it's important that we watch these trainings, but then we actually go away and do the work. OK, so we're not just thinking, oh, yeah, remove non-growth habits. That's a cool concept. And yeah, I really resonate with what he said today. And I really, really enjoyed that training. And the second this stops. Go back to running around at 90 miles an hour without actually making any changes and removing those non-growth habits. So let's get the work done as well. Guys, I love you all. Have the best day. And I'll see you soon.